I'm wearing a cowboy hat and so I was wondering under the gun. Things are weird today. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I ain't the first with the curse, with the thirst that I wanna be better, not worse, man, it hurts. I'm on this earth with my words, and I put them all together in cert, cause I wanna have worth. Working hella hard till they put me in the dirt. Gonna go far, man, listen to my words. Gonna be a star, man, life's like a blur. When you're working this hard, yeah, you get what you deserve. What's up, guys? Welcome back to episode 2 of the Bro Talk Vlog. Um, first off, I want to thank you guys for all the support on episode one. We did way better than any of us could have anticipated. Um, for episode two, we worked out some of the edit editing kinks. Some of them. Some of them. We're still a work in progress, guys. Thank you for bearing with us. But I mean, like, look, I can touch the side of the screen now. Like, if that's not progress, I don't know what it is. Got so. there somewhere. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, we have a volatile session, kind of. Um... Uh, one of us, one of us ends up winning a lot of money from the table, and then donating it right to the other person. But I'll let you guys figure that out. Um, but anyways, we will see you on the felt. Real quick, real quick, before we get into the hands, uh, I want to preface this by saying I got there a little bit earlier because Matt had some prior arrangements, and when he did come in, came in looking like this, and wow, yeehaw, yeehaw. Uh, you guys actually see it later on in the episode. He has a little bit of a monologue if you want to call it that and but yeah Sal, Sal had a lot of fun with me wearing the hat so uh and I had a lot of fun taking it from you and wearing it myself but yeah yeehaw guys yeehaw what's up guys Sal here uh just got off work on my way to go play some poker um I'm honestly I thought we needed a little bit more of an intro so I'm just kind of here recording talking about I guess trying to make an intro. Will we even include this in the vlog? I don't even know. But uh, yeah, on our way, just got some food. I was gonna video that, but I'm an idiot and completely forgot to. So maybe next time on the vlog, I'll include some of my food adventures. Uh, gotta pick up some beer for Matt since I have to do everything in this uh, partnership. And it should be an interesting night. I'll get a little bit of alcohol. I already got a couple of drinks in me. Gonna buy some more beer. And uh, hopefully we run it up, but yeah, I'll show, uh, see y'all in the vlog. All right, guys, to start off this vlog, we are at a brand new table. We are currently six-handed. Um, the under the gun is going to limp. I look down at 10, eight of hearts, under the gun plus one. Uh, pretty easy open. I make a $12 uh, over the limper. And then the small blind, is going to three bet me to thirty-one dollars. Uh, the limper is going to fold, and since it's a pretty small three bet, I think uh, calling is fine here. It's nineteen more to win forty-five. Uh, this hand has a lot of playability post flop, so I end up calling. We end up seeing a flop of eight of diamonds, six of hearts, three of spades. So we flop top pair and some backdoor equity. Uh, I check to him. He's gonna end up betting fifty. Now, it's a pretty big bet. Um, I'm not loving it right here, but I feel like if he had like a hand like an overpair, he's gonna be betting a little bit smaller and trying to extract value. Um, so usually when people bet bigger on like lower board textures, I feel like they have just ace high, so you can have like ace king, ace queen here. Um, we have a pair. If we don't improve on the turn, we can always just get rid of it, which is exactly what we do because we end up turning the jack of hearts. Um, I checked him once again and he ends up betting 75 this is a little bit of a smaller bet about a little less than half pot giving up our uh, additional equity we end up making the call which you guys will not see because i somehow lost the video after the beginning or oh, after uh the turn so i'm sorry guys i'm a bad vlogger we're still new at this but i end up calling the river is gin and we end up banking the two of hearts so we backed with a flush um, I checked to him, he goes all in, and well, uh, this we've got a tough decision here, and we end up making the tough call with our flush, and um, he shows queens, and we scoop a pot, so that was a nice way to start the session. So this next hand, shortly after the 10-8 hand, we're going to look at pocket queens and the uh, small blind. We're going to have one limp, and then it's going to fold to me in the small blind. I'm going to make a 13, the big blind is going to call and the limper is going to call. 
two of, so we go three ways to a flop of jack of diamonds, eight of clubs, four of diamonds. So a pretty good flop considering everything with our hand. Um, there are a lot of draws out there, so I'm gonna bet a little bit bigger and bet 22. Got to char uh, charge them for it. However, um, the big blind is going to raise us to sixty dollars. The limper is going going to fold, and with a, such a draw heavy board, I'm gonna just make the call here. Um, no reason to raise, and we there's a good chunk of the time that we're still still ahead. So I end up making the call. We go heads up to a turn, which is going to be the four of clubs, bringing back to a clubs. Um, I'm going to check to him, and he's going to check back. And when he checks back, I definitely feel like I'm ahead. Makes me feel like he was has like a hand like 9, 10 of diamonds, uh, nine, 10, 7 of diamonds, 9, 7 of diamonds, uh, or just like ace, 3 of diamonds. Um, so I definitely feel good about our hand now. We go to a river that's going to be the king of clubs, bringing the back door flush draw. I'm not too worried about that. I do have the Queen of Clubs, which blocks that hand. Um, but there's no point in betting here. If he has a drawing hand, I want him to bet it. Um, or bluff at it on the river. So I check to him. He ends up betting $50, which uh, is a really small bet. I'm going to snap call him. He announces ace high. We show our queens, and we scoop another pot. In this hand, we're going to have two limpers, and I'm going to look down an ace queen off in the cutoff. I'm going to go ahead and make a 12. Small blind is going to call, and one of the limpers is going to call. We're going to go three ways to a flop. Just a quick side note, I think with two limpers, you can decide to raise a little bigger than I did here, but I think 12 is also fine. Flop is king 10-8 uh, with two clubs. Having the ace of clubs here is an extremely important card because it allows us to double barrel on turned clubs along with having the gutter and just the extra like 2% equity of having that backdoor nut flush draw. So we go ahead and decide to fire 16, uh, small blind is going to call um, and the limper is going to fold. The turn is a little surprising to me because we're actually going to drill this gutter and now it's time to just go for some value. Um, I reach for chips after deliberating a little bit and fire and as I'm putting the chips out he just instamux he reads our soul and gets away from it that's a little disappointing but we're gonna rake in a pot and that's always good in this hand we're gonna look down at pocket well I guess I'm gonna look down at pocket kings um, and for the rest of the hand I believe I'm going to fail to show the camera at any given point Sometimes I truly amaze myself by what a phenomenal vlogger I truly am. But either way, we get a limper on our immediate right. Uh, pretty clear raise with the kings that I supposedly have. Uh, and I'm going to make it 12. We're going to get a call from late position and the limper. We're going to go three ways to a flop of jack 10 for rainbow. It's going to check to me and I'm gonna fire 16 and notice how I fire 16 and pick the same sizing as I picked in the threw away pot um, just last hand with the missed ace queen. I mean that's the bare basics of balancing but I think it's important to point out because I've, I've found that a lot of players end up having sizing tells and uh, kind of blows my mind. Anyways, late position is going to make the call, and the limper is actually going to check raise to 60 here. Um, I don't see any point in raising here. Uh, he's repping extremely strong when he does this. Um, and by raising, I just allow him to fold out worse and call with better. So raising, I don't think, is a very profitable play in the long run. Um, but so we're just going to go ahead and make the call and late position is going to make the fold. So we're going to go heads up to the turn which is the eight of hearts and my opponent's going to snap jam and he's got me covered so it's effectively a bet of $258. Um, when he does this, uh, he's polarizing his range but when he bets so quickly, um, Again, not definitely not the uh, best physical tell guy, but I found that timing tells are also uh, fairly reliable. And the faster the bet, uh, 
It just seems they're, uh, they tend to be bluffing more often. And also, we've got ourselves Pocket Kings, which is an over pair. We're called the Calling Stations for a reason. We do not like to fold. Um, but also, we can discount some of the really strong hands he's going to have here, like Jacks and Tens, because he limped. I don't think he limps Jacks or Tens, so he can't have either of those sets. So now he's got combos of Jack-10 and Pocket 4s. Uh, possibly he can be raising Queen-9, um, check raising Queen-9 there. As the semi-bluff got there on the turn and decided to go for maximum value. But uh, I think if that's the case, he's just going to get it. The backdoor hearts um, definitely came into consideration because he can definitely... Um, be turning a bluff that turned more equity into a uh, double barrel here. So we're going to go ahead and make the call. I hear some of the best words I've heard in a while. The opponent announced it, announces he has outs. Uh, apparently the river ace was not one of them and we're going to scoop a massive pot here. So Matt was really embarrassed about not showing the kings earlier in the hand. So as he's scooping this massive pot, I grab the camera and I'm like, I got you, Matt. I'm stupid than I was recording it upside down. So in this next hand, it's gonna be dealer. Uh, it's gonna be the dealer's choice button on yours truly. I ended up picking Pot Limit Omaha, the great game. So it's gonna fold to this guy, and he's gonna foolishly try to make it twenty-five dollars when the pot's obviously twenty dollars. But anyways, he makes it twenty dollars. Uh, donkey to my right ends up calling, and then we have a clear call with the ten seven eight five double suited. Um, this isn't really a premium hand, it's a playable hand, um, it's like a semi-connected hand, it's double suited, the suits aren't extremely relevant until your head's up, um, and that's only, I guess, like, only relevant in terms of backdoor equity or, uh, if you get heads up, heads up on the flop. Anyways, we end up calling, and one other person calls behind, four ways to a flop, two jack of hearts, seven diamonds, eight of hearts. So we flop a double gutter with the backdoor diamond draw. It checks to me. Um, I could bet here with the backdoor diamonds and the double gutter, but I think just staying a free card and not blowing that pot is better, so I check behind. The turn is gin. We turn the six of diamonds, which gives us the nutter butters and backdoor, uh, stra uh, backdoor straight flush draw. It ends up checking to my boy Maddie B Raps. And he bets a measly $45 into a hundred dollar or into an $80 pot. I'm just like, nope, not enough money. Pop. For the record, Sal didn't know what pot was. That's why he said pot and hesitated and waited for the dealer to tell him how much to put out there. I did have to say pot twice because he wasn't paying. He wasn't paying attention. <laughs> but you know what? Who cares? All I wanted to bet the pots, Fair and enough. the pot ended up being $215 according to my calculations. Uh, your calculations? According to the dealer's calculations, <laughs> <clears throat> it ends up folding back to my boy Matty B. Raps, and he makes the foolish decision of going all in, just trying to donate his money to me. We have the pretty clear cut, uh, clear cut call. We end up having basically the same hand. He has 7 5 with the, back, with the heart draw and a gutter to a 10, which I have, and then I have obviously the same straight with diamond and a gutter to a 9, um, but I end up blocking one of his outs, so he actually has 10 outs and I have 11, so I'm clearly ahead. Well, you have you have 11 outs to a scoop and I have 10, 10 outs to a scoop, all the other cards break out and we just chop. So I end up having 51.1% equity. Anyways, Matt asked if I want to run a one, um, twice. I say one or three. Well, he no, says three. I don't believe I said twice just because I, I'm like you. Um, no, you said twice. one or three. Did I say twice? You said twice, and then oh. I said one or three. We yeah, can even play the that's, audio. That's weird. Uh, no, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying that um, because I'm a one-timer in Hold'em, but in PLO, just because the uh, swing, or the variance is so much higher, um, I'll always, you know, give the other person the option to go multiple times. I'm a one-timer unless they ask me, and then I'll offer three times. That's fair, yeah. Um, but, anyways, I end up scooping five six of the pot. Luck box. Um, no, realizing my full 51.1% equity. 
and we end up winning a pretty massive pot here. So in this hand we're going to be playing Big O which is 5 card high only and I'm going to look down at a primo hand so we're obviously going to limp because I'm a nit in these mixed games. Pot! But uh, in my defense, um, my biggest advantage in these games, um, at least at these stakes, um, are definitely post-flop and not pre-flop. And five cards versus five cards all in pre, uh, the equities run super close together. And there were at least two players at, um, tilting at the table who were just looking to get in and gamble. So I was trying to play a little bit of... Uh, Pot control, Let's see if we couldn't get to a cheap flop. Uh, Sal's gonna call out of the small blind, and I believe we're gonna go five players to the flop. Flop is ace of clubs, nine of diamonds, five of spades. We've got both backdoor flush, backdoor nut flush draws, um, and top pair. Sal leads into everybody for $20 gets two calls in front of me um, and a queen would give me a pretty good wrap so I think I've got a pretty easy call here for 20 the turn is the three of diamonds giving us uh, uh, the nut flush diamond draw and it's gonna check all the way to me I decide to bet 75 Sal calls and the player on my immediate right calls as well so that sucks. The bluff didn't get through. Uh, I guess we'll just give up. Except we're actually playing an extremely easy game. We're just gonna paint the ten of diamonds on the river and have the stone nuts and a set and a set. So now when it checks to me, uh, have an obvious value bet here with the greatest hand that anybody could possibly have. It's time to go for some value. I bet 165. It doesn't take very long for Sal to go, you know what, Matthew? I got really lucky against you in that other hand. Here, have some money back in calls, like the calling station he is. I mean, we're the calling stations for a reason. But in all seriousness, on, in all seriousness though, the bed sizing is what got him paid. <clears throat> I mean, it's unfortunate because it was a backdoor flush. So, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit more unlikely that he has it after continuing on the flop because he's more likely to be have like a value hand instead of drawing hands. Because I, I had a wrap on the flop, so and backdoor to smaller flush, by the way. And obviously the backdoor to the smaller flush. So I blocked the wrap out uh, the wraps that I wanted him to have. So, anyways, his bet sizing is what got him paid. So good bet. Thanks, Sal. So after the last hand, I'm a little bit on tilt now. So I look down at Jack Seven of Spades under the gun, and I'm like, you know what? Who cares? I limp. The guy to my immediate left says uh, makes it twelve dollars. It falls back to me, and I end up making the loose call. And Matt had some choice words about this. Yeah, no, just a quick session update. I'm wearing a cowboy hat, and Sal's limping under the gun. Things are weird today. Anyways, we go heads up to a flop that comes two spades, don't remember what the cards were, goes check check, we bink the flush on the turn, cause easy game, um, I bet 15, he immediately folds, and he's a good sport and shows us his cards, I show him mine, and we scoop an easy pot, easy game. Alright, so after that last hand, I'm feeling good, gonna turn the session back around, um, we're gonna have one limper, and then Matt's gonna open the button to $12. Um, you can't see it because he's a bad vlogger and forgot to start recording. Um, however, when Matt opens the button, he's going to have a pretty wide range here. King Jack off is not the best hand here. Um, so it's either a 3-bet or fold uh, strategy right here. I like the 3-bet because it's Matt and you know what? Yeah, I'm going to 3-bet you. So I make it $40. It folds back to him and he makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of the Ace of Diamonds, Ten of Diamonds, 4X. Um, I'm going to, this is a flop that's going to hit both of our ranges pretty hard here. So normally I like to size down on my flop C betting range um, in 3-bet pots. But in this board, it says it's going to hit both of our ranges pretty wide. He's going to be able to continue with a lot of hands. So this is a good board to actually size up for once. So I end up making, 50, making it $50. And then we finally slide over to Matt. 
All right, all right. Sal 3 bet me and I called. I guess I have to vlog this hand. Let me get my camera ready. Um, uh, camera's ready. Let's take a look at it. Oh, hey, a set. That's always good. <laughs> I flopped the set against Sal. Time to take him straight to value town. Sal's going to bet 50 uh, on this flop. I don't see any reason to raise. So I make the call, and we're going to take a turn. That is going to be an offsuit 8. Now, this is now me having a jack. I block queen jack and jack nine, and honestly, I feel like this is actually a decent card for me to continue with. I don't think it's ever gonna hit his range really. Um, so I'm still telling the story that have uh, ace king, ace queen, and I still can have like queen jack, jack nine for additional equity as well um, as like king queen, king jack, obviously for gutters. But we end up making the bet of 115 dollars. Uh, now, when he bets 115 here, I face my first real decision. Um, do I want to go ahead and put in the raise here? Um, and it kind of comes down to the, the thought of how much extra value am I going to get from good hands or strong draws when I raise this turn versus how many bluffs do I just fold out? And I came to the decision because of the fact that I'm in position, and even if Sal does decide to check a hand like Ace King, Ace Queen, you know the very unlikely Ace Tens that he can have because I blocked that, um, possibly even turned in rivered sets. Uh, even if he just, I can get value from hands like that. Even if he checks river, uh, I can go ahead and bet. If I was out of position, I'd probably just go ahead and put in the raise here. But in position, I go ahead and make the call and hope Sal fires on a lot of different rivers. So we end up going to a river. He ends up making the call. We go to a river that's going to be another offsuit nine. So the flush draw misses, misses which I think he can potentially have. Um, he can have a variety of flush draws. However, it does stink because some of his flush draws are going to be like nine, eight of diamonds, eight, seven of diamonds. Um, eight, seven of diamonds, I guess not really that relevant, but like nine, eight gets two, gets there with two pair, which kind of sucks. But for the most part, flush draws miss. Um, obviously have no showdown value. So the only way we're going to win this pot is the bluff at it. But you know what? No guts, no glory. We fire a bet of $240 and Matt decides to jam. And yeah, no, we muck. Good hand. In, in all fairness to you, um, the triple barrel there puts a lot of pressure on all my, uh, weaker aces, tens, and, you know, hands with showdown that I have there. So, I mean, I just saw I'm going to show up with pocket tens, which, again, tough to bluff into sets. Yeah, no, it's not plus EV to bluff into sets, but you live and you learn. <clears throat> Alright, guys, so, once again, Matt ends up taking all of my money. Um, throughout the entire session, all of my bluffs got through, except against him. And I guess that's what I get for trying to bluff a calling station. I mean, don't try to bluff into, you know, uh, sets. That's... Yeah, you know what? You're right, you're right. No, bluff it into sets. It's negative EV. I should have known that. Or, you know, just top pair. No kicker. Sorry, guys. So, we didn't get any footage of this hand that we're talking about right now. But, uh, quick story. So, I open kings under the gun with the king of clubs. Uh, folds to the small blind. He calls. Matt in the big blind calls. Go three-way to a flop of ace-10 rag with two clubs. Check, check. I check. Um, the turn is with Queen of Clubs, third club. Um, check, Matt bets 15. I have the, I have the, king, uh, the enough flush blocker. Um, I make it 50. Um, small blind call, small blind folds, Matt calls. Um, river is a rag, complete brick. Um, Matt checks, I make a 120, and Matt snap called me with the top pair, no kicker, ace eight. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, just so many of your hands there. Uh, is gonna include you know your king x you know your king of clubs blockers don't bluff a calling clubs, station blockers. don't uh, bluff a calling station sorry sorry just read my sorry. read my soul sorry. just read my soul but anyways sorry uh that was the hand we're talking yes, about right here oh, oh yeah fucking top pair no kicker or ace high oh and just God. get there on the turn with the soul read what do you no 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 calls me with ace high ace three <laughs> off honey where do they find these people honey where do they find, find these people, people? Uh, uh, i'm talking about uh Ace, yeah, they, 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 around. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we come with raise and I just snap. 
snap me off with a with top pair no kicker, and then the king six hand versus ace three on the six five five board. What can I say? You know, I just called me called me with ace high, honey. Where do they find these people? Do they they don't even know how to spell poker? They don't even know how to spell poker. P o k e r, by the way. But anyways, apparently I wouldn't know. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. We appreciate all the feedback. Again, we're still learning. But once again, I'm Sal, he's Matt, and we're the Calling Stations. Stations.